So the static parts of our scene are done, and now we can move on to uh, drawing and moving the paddles. So let's first choose our paddle geometry right here after our window geometry. So we'll just say that our paddle width is going to be 10. Our paddle height is 60. All of these as usual are in pixels. And our paddle offset is equal to 10. So the position of the left paddle is paddle offset to the right of the right edge of the left boundary, which in itself is bound to be taking us to the right of the left edge of the screen. It sounds complicated, you'll see it in the code. The x coordinates of the left paddle, this is boundary thickness plus paddle offset. Um, similar to the net, we want the initial position of the paddles to be at the center of the window height, which means we have to subtract half of the paddle height. The y coordinate on the left panel, therefore, is window height divided by 2 minus paddle height divided by 2. We can now create the left paddle. And let's do this just after we created the right boundary. This is our first changing object, so it's lowercase, left paddle. And this is, of course, a pi game right. And then, uh, again, so the x coordinate. Um, so is uh, on the left edge of the screen plus the boundary thickness plus the paddle offset then um, we got to move this uh, to the center of the screen in y so this is window Right, divided by 2. And then we got to subtract from that the paddle height. Divided by 2, half of the paddle, so that is centered on the screen. So, and then it's the paddle width and the paddle height. So, that's the left paddle for the right paddle. Similar calculations, so let's do this. Uh, if you're getting confused by this, it helps going back to the original diagram that we made and uh, figure out all these measurements uh, from the known ones, and then you'll see that all of this makes sort of sense. So, and we have window width minus boundary thickness. So, uh, and then minus uh, paddle offset, and then minus the paddle width. So, that's the x coordinate. <clears throat> the y coordinate stays the same. Window height divided by 2 minus paddle height divided by 2. So, that's the right paddle. Drawing the two paddles now is uh, very, very easy um, because we can just add them to the tuple and the drawing command. That's why we wrote this thing in the first place to make it easy to extend. So here we just say left paddle and right paddle. So when we run this now, um, the uh, paddles should be in the scene, but of course they're static because we haven't written the code yet to move them. But let's do this, see what we get. And we have a typo, um, and uh, uh, so, uh, well, uh, this is a type error, so our argument must be a red style object. Let's go back to the code and see what's wrong there with the uh, right paddle. So we have, um, oh, we got the uh, window width. Uh, minus paddle offset minus uh, paddle width. Uh, so that's the x coordinate, uh, then the y coordinate, and we forgot totally um, to add the paddle width and the paddle height. Oh, but of 
course, and Python noticed that those two numbers weren't enough. It had to be four, so uh, let's go ahead and rerun this. And now we <coughs> see the error is fixed, and uh, we get the paddles on the screen. So, but we haven't written the code to move them, so they're static for now. So let's get back here. And um, so when we move the paddles, the game engine still only gives us a snapshot in time. The movement is just an illusion based on the rapid succession of the still pictures. We therefore need a way to record the state of each of the paddles at any given point in time so that the game engine can do the right thing. So each paddle can really be in one of three states. It can be stopped, it can be moving up, or it can be moving down. So let's create that right after we create our paddle geometry. We can create our paddle states so that we can use these in our code. So uh, I do it like this. Paddle stop is equal to just a string named stop. The reason why I'm doing this here like this is uh, that it's way easier for Python when we work with names to uh, figure out that a, a name is spelled wrong, then the contents of a string is spelled wrong. So this is a very usual pattern you'll see in a lot of Pygame code. So we put the paddle down. Do this. Should we strip it down? Okay. So in order to change state. Um, or we call this more formally to transition from one state to another. Um, some sort of event has to happen. So let's assume that our initial state of our left paddle is paddle stop. Um, the keys to move our paddle will be W and S of the classic WASD um, video game um, uh, gameplay default for movement in a game. Um, and so uh, uh, W and S for the left paddle and the up and down arrows for the right paddle. Um, and if the left player presses the W key down, the left paddle should transition to the paddle up state. If the left player releases the W key, which means the key comes up, the left paddle should transition from the paddle up state back to the paddle stop state. Uh, note that we don't define what happens when the player holds the key pressed down, as this is a state, not an event. And the way we have actually set it up <coughs> is that holding the W key down is really identical to being in the paddle up state. So we can easily extend the system to cover the paddle down state as well. And in engineering, what we now <coughs> have created is called a finite state machine. That's a very powerful concept, and engineers have developed a formal graphical representation for it. And graphically, our finite state machine looks something like this. So this is our finite state machine. And uh, the initial state is indicated by the transition arrow from the little black dot. We have our three states. Um, and uh, the Pi game gives us two event types for key presses, key down and key up, so that they're there. And uh, then, uh, in addition, we can check on which key has been pressed or released and update the states accordingly. So what you see there is a combination of the key down event and then the actual uh, key that's being pressed or released in terms of key uh, down and key up. So let's create our um, initial states for the uh, paddles. So just after we created our paddles, we can add the uh, following lines here that says left paddle state is equal to paddle stop and right paddle state is equal to paddle stop. Okay, um, so as uh, uh, mentioned before, Pygame gives us two types, uh, event types for key presses. Uh, one called key down when a key is pressed down and then key up when the key is released. And uh, when we receive these event types, we can then check which actual key has been pressed or released and update our states accordingly. So the, uh, let's do this and write uh, and modify our event loop, which is right here uh, with us. And you'll find that um, it's going to look relatively long, but relatively simple. That's about normal for code 
expressing simpler concepts uh, shouldn't be very complicated and you'll find that it's when you read it it's a uh, uh, exact representation of the finite state machine um, before we uh, jump in there let's actually um, um, also add a uh, event handler for when the escape key has been pressed so let's do that so again uh, we don't have a, a quit event so now we're saying if the event type is equal to key down right and before we jump into the paddle state uh, update let's uh, check if the event key is actually equal to the escape key which is represented by this constant here k underscore escape then we want to quit pygame also again and uh, exit to the operating system okay and now we can update the paddle state by uh, checking uh, now which uh, event keys we have so if the event key is actually the w key which is represented by k underscore w and the left paddle state is equal to uh, paddle stop looking at the state machine we now uh, know we have to transition to the paddle up state so left paddle state is equal to paddle up if on the other hand the event key is equal to the s key and the left paddle is in the stop state then the left paddle state the new state should be paddled down Okay, that's does it for the left pedal. Now we're going to do the same for the right pedal. Event key is equal to the up arrow, which is represented by k underscore up, and the right pedal state is equal to pedal stop. Right. So then the new state for uh, the right pedal. is equal to paddle up and last case if the event key is equal to the down key down arrow and the right paddle state is equal to Paddle stop. Then the new state for the right key, uh, for the right pedal, is equal to paddle down. All right. So that's it for handling the pressing of keys. Um, now, if you look at the indentation level, we're handling the next alternative, uh, saying, okay, uh, we had the quit event, we had the key down event, now we're going to handle the key up event. So event key is equal to, uh, sorry, event type is equal to key up. And now we're checking if the event key again is uh, the uh, W key. And if the left pedal state is pedal down, uh, sorry, is uh, pedal up, then we know we have to transition to pedal stop. Um, otherwise, if the event key now is k s and so the s key has been released and the left pedal state is pedal down then the left pedal state again should be the next one is stop 
as well. Right, whenever we release a key, it should stop. So that's pedal stop, and that up here is also pedal stop capitalized. And doing the same thing for the uh, right hand side. Event key is key up and right pedal state is equal to pedal up. Now we know that the right pedal state, the new one, is stop. And finally, if the event key is equal to key down and the right pedal state is equal to pedal down again, we also enter the left state, uh, the uh, stop state for the right pedal. So, pedal, stop. Um, okay, so um, that works and should run. So let's uh, test this. Uh, we probably have typos in there. Um, so uh, let's check whether this runs. And lo and behold, it actually does run. Um, and uh, so uh, now, however, uh, pressing the keys does nothing um, because we haven't written the uh, update code yet. Uh, but what should work actually is if I press the escape key, the program should uh, end. And uh, so I hit the escape key and again, the um, game ends. So that part works. So now the state of our paddles directly affect the state of our whole game. So for instance, if the left paddle is in the paddle down state, we need to, before we draw it, increase the y coordinate value uh, for the paddle by a certain amount. So let's call this the paddle speed measured in pixels per frame. So and we actually add that to where we uh, provide our uh, paddle parameters. So here um, I'm going to say uh, paddle speed and I'm going to choose 10 frames, uh, 10 pixels per frame. Um, so, um, and uh, the part that we'll have to write now is the missing center part of our main game loop. Uh, first part is process events, third part was draw scene, and in the middle, in a classic game setup, is uh, the update of our game state. So that happens right here. Update game state. And uh, so, and that's uh, now that we have the state machine, it's actually pretty simple. So um, I can say, okay, if the uh, right pedal state is equal to pedal up, uh, then I'll have to, uh, sorry, left pedal. Let's start with the left pedal first, you know, from left to right. So if the left pedal state is pedal up, uh, then we have to decrease the y coordinates of our left pedal coordinate um, by the pedal speed. So let's do this here. So we have left pedal, and we can access the y component using the dot here. So left pedal dot y gives us the y component, uh, the, the y position of this thing. Uh, and then I can say, OK, left pedal. Uh, dot y minus pedal speed and that's perfectly fine but there's uh, so this basically tells it um, to uh, take whatever is in the uh, left pedal there is an equal sign missing whatever is in the left pedal dot y variable decrease it by pedal speed and reassign it to that um, I can also directly tell Python to just decrease this by using the following construct here and say minus equals. So, which is another way of saying decrease left pedal dot y by pedal speed. Um, likewise, and alternatively, if we are in the pedal up, uh, pedal down speed uh, states, so if left pedal state is equal to pedal down, then we have to increase the y coordinates. So left pedal dot y plus equals paddle speed. And then we're going to do the same thing for the right paddle. If the right paddle uh, state 
is equal to paddle up, then the left, the right paddle, y is decremented by paddle speed, otherwise if the left, uh, the right paddle state is paddle down, we have to increase right paddle again, so right paddle dot y plus equals paddle speed. So again, no handling of the fact that uh, the third possible state uh, paddle stop, because that literally means do nothing, so we don't even write any code for that. So let's try to um, um, run this. There's one thing uh, um, so we can uh, run this now because we already have the drawing code for the paddle hasn't changed. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. So run module. And so here it comes. And if I press the W key, we should go up. If I press the S key, it should go down. And the up key and the down key for the right arrow, uh, for the right paddle, however, does not seem to work. So let's uh, go back to the code and see what's going on. So if right paddle state is uh, paddle up, then right paddle minus one. So that looks um, um, good in terms of the update. So the key handling seems to be the problem here. Um, and yes, uh, um, I do this all the time. Uh, this is a test for equality. So uh, that should, however, be an assignment. So I just have a couple of um, equal signs here. Um, too many. Um, so uh, um, long story short, whenever you are in an if statement, uh, you should use double equal signs. Whenever uh, outside of it, you usually uh, just work uh, with uh, assignment, right? So, and that's why nothing really happened there. Um, as you can see, Python did not detect this as an error uh, because it's technically correct. So, uh, and it slavishly does what we tell it to. Um, so run this again, and this time around, uh, the right paddle should also move, and yes, it does. So one thing we see, however, it moves um, relatively fast, and the other thing is that I can move it actually off the screen. Um, so we'll fix the fast movement next, and then um, after that, we're going to um, make sure to keep the uh, panels on the screen by using another big, big concept in game development, which is collision detection. So, but uh, let's do uh, the uh, paddle movement. Um, so, uh, in, in the current version of the game, Pygame executes the event loop as fast as it can. Uh, this means that after Pygame is done drawing the scene, it immediately returns to the beginning of the main game loop, uh, process events, updates game state, and then proceeds to draw the new screen again. So, um, on a fast computer, this leads to a high frame rate. On a slow one, to a low one. Also, depending on uh, the event and state processing and how uh, updating may take longer for some frames than others, so you may see a variable frame rate. Uh, frame rate. So Pygam has been designed for a fixed frame rate uh, to avoid all these problems. So in order to achieve a fixed frame rate, uh, we need first to decide on one. and. Uh, then uh, uh, that's high enough to give us the illusion of smooth movement, but low enough so as to not overpower slower computers. So 30 frames per second is a good value. So let's add that uh, right here after our paddle states. So uh, let's do frames per second. And let's set that to 30. So next step is we need a clock uh, because we need to measure time. So Pygame gives us one. So right after Pygame init, uh, we can actually um, uh, get our clock. So uh, this is the uh, FPS clock. Um, and uh, we're requesting it from Pygame. Uh, and it has a sub module called time and there is a clock in there. So now we have a, a clock and all we have to do now is uh, at the very end after our Pygame update, we will add another line that uh, uh, now we'll just uh, tick the clock. So we're going to say FPS clock dot 
tick and then with frames per second. So what that essentially does is it'll essentially pause the game for just the right amount of time to achieve a frame rate of 30 frames per second. So when we run this now, uh, the paddles should move slower. As you can see, and um, but they can still move off the screen, which is something that will um, fix next.